God. Isn't the Lord good in this place? Amen. Jesus is awesome in this house. Amen. I want you to lift your hands up, and I just want you to think about how awesome Jesus is for a moment. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to gather here together. God, on this midweek service, Jesus, you are so awesome, God. You are so mighty, Father. Come on, just begin to use words to describe your love and adoration for him right now. Jesus, you are awesome, God. Father, you are great, Lord Jesus. Lord, I can't breathe without you, God. I can't take a step without you, Father. Come on, let's just adore him for a moment from the front to the back. Everybody in this place, let's just lift up the name of Jesus. Father, you are the everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace. You are my healer. God, you are great. You are high and lifted up, Jesus. Your name is above every other name, God. And that's your name. Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that you are Lord, that you are God, that you are Almighty. And God, we take time out of our busy schedules, God, to set everything else aside, Father, and to put our hearts and our minds upon you and your glory. Uh, 
his ways and in prayer. So I, I appreciate that so much of what God is doing. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to teach, preach, do something tonight. I'm not sure what will happen, but we'll see. Um, turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 uh, through 4. And you guys can remain seated. Um, I know you're still honor the word of that. Um, but uh, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verses 33. Actually, let's read 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everybody say righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. How many want some things added unto you tonight? Amen. I want the addition. I want the multiplication of God in my life. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity to be in Mr. Walker tonight to teach, to preach your word, God, to bring out an applicable thing about the righteousness, Lord Jesus. And God, I pray that you do it in the name of Jesus. And everybody say in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I want to preach for a short moment tonight the blessing of righteous living. Amen. A few years ago, I was preaching a youth revival up here in uh, northern Indiana, and uh, I was staying at Pastor Nick and Sister Lindsay's house, and uh, I said, Pastor Nick, it's, I need you to drive me to church, and he said, no, I'm not going to drive you, but I'll ride with you, okay? And we woke up a little bit late, Pastor Nick had to do his hair and all this other sort of thing, and was making them, that didn't really happen, but I, we were running late, and it was really foggy out, and so I was trying to make up some time, and uh and Nick, Pastor, he wouldn't drive for me, so I was upset about that. And I was like, man, you know these roads better than I do. You should be driving. So he's like, no, you got this. And so we were driving down this old Indiana country road through some small Indiana towns through Napoli. I don't know, I was not taking a nap when I drive through that town. And just all these other towns we were driving through. And then we came up on this small town, and the, the speed limit went from 55 to about 35 just like that. And if I see a speed limit that says 55, that means 65 to me. And so I was going about 67 miles an hour, and we came into this little small town through the through the dense fog, and all of a sudden, through the fog, I saw these blue lights coming up behind me, all right? And so I was like, oh, Nick, Nick, this is your fault. You're the one that's supposed to be driving. And he's like, yeah, whatever, man. You're the one that's speeding. So uh, we sat there, and it uh, so happened that just like about every other time that I drive, I forgot my wallet at home. And so this police officer comes up, and uh, he, you know, he he knocks on. He says, uh, you know, oh, uh, you know, do you know how fast you were going? I was like, you know, I really wasn't paying attention. Uh, I was just trying to concentrate on the road, the fog, and everything that was here. You know, just trying to be cool about everything. I was like, sir, how fast was I going? I don't even know if I was speeding. I, I, I was probably going below the speed limit, sir. And uh, he's like, no, actually, I got you in a 67 and a 35. And I was like, oh. And then so he got back, and I looked at Nick again. I said, you know, this is your fault. You should have been driving. And so the drive, the police officer, and he was a very nice guy. He came and he said, and I didn't have my driver's license on me, so he was giving me a hard time about that. And so he came back to the car, and, uh, you know, it took an extra time because he had to look up all my information. And by the time he gave my ticket, it was like 200 and some dollars I had to pay. And I got to church finally in Kinderville, and when I got there, I said, Pastor, I am so sorry I'm late. Uh, you know, I got pulled over by uh, Barney Fine there in the small town, Indiana, and he gave me a 200 and some dollar ticket, and I'm sorry, but God's going to do something here today in Jesus' name. And he's just like, oh, 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 and the pastor was laughing and all this other stuff. He goes, let me see that ticket. And I gave him the ticket, and he goes, oh, that's my nephew. We'll, we'll take care of that after church. I was like, thank you, Jesus. And so, uh, you know, his nephew, and then it so happened that his grandfather was like the chief of police or something like that. So I was thanking God for that, amen. And so we get to the restaurant. I still remember we went to a Mexican restaurant. I got a wet burrito. I'm not sure what Pastor Nick got, but it probably wasn't anything good. And I was still mad at him because he was the one that was still supposed to be driving. And we got there, and so the pastor said, well, they're going to take care of the ticket, but the chief of police wants to talk to you. I said, oh, okay. And so I got on the phone, and I said, hello, sir, how are you today? He goes, I'm doing better than you're doing, sir. And I was like, yes, sir, I understand. He goes, I said, I understand that you're going to help me out a little bit. He goes, I shouldn't help you out, son. And I was like, yeah, I, I know, I shouldn't have been speeding, and I was trying to be all nice and cool. He goes, so what, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm a preacher. And he goes, you're a preacher? And I was like, yeah, I'm a 
preacher. He goes, well, you didn't have your license and you're going 30 miles an hour over the speed limit. Son, you need to get righteous. And I was like, yes, sir, you're right. I'll take a short for $200, y'all. Don't bother me none. I'm just saying, okay? And so it got down to, he said, you need to get righteous. Amen. And so what I want to talk about tonight is this whole thing about righteousness. I've never preached this message in my entire life. And I was studying God and put it on my heart all week to dive into this. And Jesus, he told, he told, the, uh, he told us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, he said, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Uh, when, we, when we start to feel empty in this place and spiritually starved and parched in our spiritual palate, could it be because we have gone away from living a righteous life? Amen. The word of righteousness is mentioned in the Bible 300 and six times. And I want everybody to know here tonight that there is a blessing in righteous living. Can I get an amen? Yeah. And what we need to do instead of blaming everybody else and making excuses to why we can't live right and do right, and we need to turn away from our wicked ways and start running towards God and His righteousness. Amen. These are one of the messages that I need to preach to myself every once in a while because we live in a world that gets so busy from time to time. We get so wrapped up in our own lives and before we know it, we're off track and we don't even know where we're at because we got work, we got school, we got kids, we got this, we got that. And what's so unfortunate sometimes is we get so busy with church work that we lose out on our relationship with God. And I'm telling you, God is calling us back to a relationship with Him in these hours. This world that we live in, we need to daily approach as we daily approach the second coming of Jesus Christ, uh, we need to go away from sin and towards the right ways of God. The Bible says this though also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Folks, we're living in some perilous times. It frightens me sometimes when I see the President of our United States of America standing in a place where there's, there's there, he, he just making excuses for terrorism. There's stuff going on in the Middle East that is, that is happening in our day and our hour. And it's time that we have a heart that goes after righteousness. In the same verse it says, For men shall be lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural effect. Truth breakers, false accusers, and captain, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heavy, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, and from, from such turn away. All these actions are the flesh and unselfishness, unrighteous living. It seems that this world that we're trying, that we're living in, it tries to make it seem like righteousness is a thing of the past. Amen. Hollywood attempts to make this righteousness and I think of the old days or it's old fashioned and out of date but I want everyone to know here tonight uh, that righteous living is not out of date. Uh, righteous living is not old fashioned. Righteous living is the only way to go because there is a blessing in righteousness. Uh, there is a pure freedom that comes in our lives uh, when day in and day out every action that we take uh, we're right in line with the God that's, that we serve. Uh, that we're right in line with every step righteousness. There is rest in righteousness. Amen. There's a calm that comes in our lives when we live in a righteous manner. There's a blessing in righteousness. There is a great reward for living right and doing right. We must crucify this idea that this world has better things for us. We must crucify our flesh that wants to do the opposite of what is right in the eyes of God. God is calling his people back to a place of righteousness. God is calling us to a place where we make our minds up that I am going to do what is right in the eyes of God. Proverbs gives us some insight to the blessing of righteous living. In Proverbs 11, it says, Riches profit not the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his ways, but the wicked shall fall in his own wickedness. Psalm 21, 21, Proverbs 21 and 21, it says, He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness and honor. Righteousness, according to these verses, will deliver us from death. It will give 
give us direction around destruction. And you will find life and honor in righteous living. We need to go back to doing what's right all the time. We can make up our minds and no matter what pressures come, no matter what comes my way, I'm going to do right in every situation. Proverbs 11, 18 says the wicked work and the deceitful work. But to him that so of righteousness shall be a sure reward. The reward for the righteous is a place called heaven. How many want to go to heaven in this place tonight? The Bible describes heaven in Revelation 21. It says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared as a bride and torn for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God. For the, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelation 22, and he showed me a pure water of life, crystal clear, proceeding out of the throne of God, and on the land in the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river, was the tree of life, which bare the twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, the leaves, the trees, for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse, uh, but the throne of God and the land shall be in it. Uh, his servants shall serve him, uh, and they shall see his face. Uh, his name shall be on their foreheads, uh, and there shall be no more night there. They'll need no more candle, neither more light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, uh, and they shall reign forever and forever. Revelation 20.10 says, uh, and he carried me away in the spirit of the great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God in her life was of the stone most precious, uh, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal. And he had a wall great and high, and twelve gates, the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which were the name of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And on the east three gates, and north three gates, and south three gates, uh, and the west three gates, uh, and the wall of that city had twelve foundations, uh, and the name of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Uh, and then the top of me had a golden reed to the measure of the city, the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. The city lieth four square, the length is as large as the breadth. And measured the city of the reed, 12,004 furlongs. The length of the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, 140 cubits, according to the measure of man that is of the angel. And the building of the wall of the jasper, the city was pure gold, like a glass. And the foundation of the wall was the city garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, sapphire, the fourth an emerald, the fifth a sardonyx, the sixth a sardius, and the crystallite, the eighth the barrel, the ninth the topaz, the tenth the preserve, the eleventh the chastened, the twelfth an amethyst, and the twelfth gate were the twelve pearls. I'm talking about a place called heaven, y'all. That is the place where the righteous will go. It is a place where I want to go, but we got to be the right man. A desire for righteousness in our lives. I want you all to know that no matter what you're going through tonight, in the end it's all going to be worth it. That we got to stay on the right path. The, the shine and luster of righteous living will be so revealed when we walk on the streets of gold together. Uh, we'll touch the gates of pearl and to see the throne of sapphire with the one and only true God of this world who is high and lifted up. I don't know about you all, but I'm looking forward to that day when I can see Jesus face to face. When there'll be no more crying, there'll be no more tears, there won't be anything else left. But just me and Jesus will be able to worship him and not worry about anything else. I want to go to this place called heaven. There is a blessing in righteous living. Don't get distracted by the things of this world. We cannot afford to let sin beset us anymore. It's time that we pursue the kingdom of God and his righteousness like never before. Uh, I want to tell you all tonight there's a blessing in righteousness. I want to dispel a trick of the enemy. I had some people in the past that come up to me and they said, every time that I try to do right and I try to live right, it seems like the devil just attacks me that much more. Has anybody ever heard anybody say that before? Well, I want you to know that Isaiah 54, 11 through 17, it says, O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with bare colors and lie the foundation with sapphires. And I will make 
and great shall be the peace of the children. Verse 14, in righteousness thou shalt be established. Thou shalt be far from, from, from oppression, for thou shalt not fear from the terror, for it shall not come nigh thee. Verse 15, behold, thou shalt surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Verse 16, behold, I have created the smith that blows the coals of fire, that bring them forth an instrument for his work. I have created the waster to destroy. Verse 17, this is a verse we always quote, but God has been dealing with me about this verse. It says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against thee in judgment shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. There's been times in my life where I felt like I was being afflicted, tossed by the tempest waves of the sea of life, could not find my way. I felt like I was just kind of just in the, just moving by the waves and being moved by the things of life. I felt like giving up. I was praying. I was reading my Bible. I was witnessing. I was going to church. But it came a point where I didn't feel it. I didn't want to do it. But I made my mind up. I'm going to do what's right in the eyes of God. righteous, 
and our kids pick up from that, there will be a great peace that will fall upon our children. And I'm telling you, our kids need peace of mind like never before today. And me as a dad, and you as a dad, and you as a mom have a responsibility to live righteously in the eyes of your kids. Amen? You say, well, I don't have kids yet. Well, someday you might. And remember this preacher tonight. Live righteously in their eyes. Oh, I heard, I've heard stories about counseling people where kids have walked in and they've seen their kids. They've seen their parents doing some foul things and cussing each other out and yelling. Just 
life. And I'm walking in the ways that God wants me to walk in. The Bible tells me that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. I want somebody to know that devil's got it out for them they see. He's had it out for you. But we're going to make a decision to do what's right in the eyes of God each and every day. And the Bible promises us that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. If I can have my musician, please come tonight. You never come to play. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment shall thou condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. The blessing of righteousness is no matter what weapon. I want you all to know that we win. Amen. Being born again and living righteously, when it's all said and done, you will win in the end. God will be on your side. So tonight, I want to challenge you all from here forward. And when you leave this place, that no matter what comes at you, that you're going to do what's right in the eyes of God. It's not always easy. It's not always peaches and cream. Sometimes the right way is the hard way. But in the eyes of God, the only hard way is the way of the transgressor. But I'm going to make up my mind that I'm going to live righteously. That I'm going to love people like never before. If you want to read more into this, you can read Romans 6, 13 through 23. And it says, neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God. So those who are alive or dead, your members are instruments of righteousness unto God. That teaches us principle upon principle on how we can live righteously unto God. It says to give our members to the Lord, which is our hands, our mouth, our nose, our ears, our eyes, everything moving in the right direction, moving in the right direction. And when this happens, go to my text. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of this will be added unto you. We've had visions, we've had dreams of revival in Mishawaka. Live right. All of this will be added unto you. God's dealt with you about financial provision. Live right. Establish his kingdom in your life. And all of this will be added unto you. God's dealt with you about things that he's going to do in your life. Live right. Seek God in righteousness. And these all shall be added unto you. We can all stand at our feet tonight. Still early. I'll end on this thought. I don't think it's coincidence that the armor of God, when we put it on, talks about the breastplate of righteousness being put over our hearts. Because where our hearts lead us is where we're going to go. And Paul told the church at Ephesus, put on the breastplate of righteousness. I ask you tonight, where's your heart going? What's your heart being pulled by? It's being pulled by worldliness. You will partake of the blessings of righteousness. If it's being pulled in the ways of sin, this is going to lead to death and despair and destruction. But I thank God for the blood that was shed on Calvary that gives us the opportunity to partake of the promise of righteous living. Now, I'm not going to do an altar call tonight. I want to right where we're at. I want us all to lift our hands. And I want us just to begin to do a self-evaluation of our own lives. Come on, where are you at right now? Josh, where are you at? Where do you stand with God right now? Lord, I pray that a hunger for righteous living fall upon us like never before, Lord Jesus. God, I pray that we're moved by your spirit, Jesus. And then, God, I pray right now that we move ourselves, God. I, I come against any stubbornness right now. 
I come against any attitudes, God, that are contrary to your spirit and your word right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you for this elect few that are here tonight, Jesus, to God. I feel like our desire in the righteousness of your kingdom, Father. But, God, I pray for those that aren't here tonight, God. I pray, God, that you put on them a calling to righteousness, Jesus. That we do what's right in your eyes, God. That we don't give in to this temptation of the world that says righteous living is old-fashioned. And that it's a thing of the past. But God, I feel like you're calling us to a place of righteousness. That you're calling us to a place of holiness and separation from the things of this world, Lord God. That we would lay it all aside and say, Father, I want to seek you first in your kingdom and your righteousness, God. That all of this stuff can be added unto us. And Lord, I pray right now that you stir up every promise again that you spoke to Pastor Ezekiel, that you that you spoke to Bishop Ebright, God. Lord, that you've spoken to every family in this church, Lord. Oh God, I pray that you stir it up right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody help me pray right now, right where you're at your seat. God, I pray that you stir it up right now in the name of Jesus. God, I pray, God, that you establish these promises of righteousness in our lives right now in the name of Jesus. Establish it in every teenager, God. Establish it, Father, in every family member, in every single mom in this place, God. In every family in this place, Jesus. Let us take righteousness, God, into our homes like never before in the name of Jesus. God, let it be done. Now, if you can, just lift your hands and just love the Lord. Lord, we love you with all our hearts. Father, we need you in this hour. God, stir our hearts to do what's right in your eyes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. How many feel that call just to do what's right in the eyes of God? Anybody feel that in this place? Amen. Praise the Lord. I do want, I, before we go, I do want you to get out of your seat. I said I wasn't going to do an awful call, but it's going to be quick. I want you to come up here. I want to do something real quick. I want to pray for this city. So everybody, I want you to come. I want to pray for this city. I drove down through Main Street, and I just seen people out driving around, and it just gave me a burden for this city again. How many know we got to be praying for our communities? Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Let's pray for our city right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's pray for Mishawaka. Let's pray. Let's intercede for South Bend right now in the name of Jesus. God, I pray right now for this city. Lord, I pray that God, as we begin to live righteously like never before, Father, that God, people begin to see, Lord Jesus, the blessing upon this church. That God, people begin to see the glory that will begin to fall like never before. I see a cloud of glory that God has wanted to send to this church like never before. And I, it's part of this righteous living. Come on, I believe it. I can see with my own eyes. God, let your glory begin to fall on this place. Lord, I, I pray that as we lift you up, that you do as your word says, and that you draw them in unto you, Lord Jesus. That you draw people from this community to this church right now. In the name of Jesus, God, I, oh, Father, we stand against, Lord Jesus, the prince of this city. Oh, spirits of religiosity, Lord Jesus, we stand against them right now. God, let your truth that makes people free be released from this place. Oh, God, let the spirit of evangelism fall upon every individual in this house in the name of Jesus. God, let the spirit of boldness begin to fall upon every man, upon every woman in this house. Oh, God, that we become bold with our, with our witness, uh, that we become bold with our faith. Uh, God, that we're challenged by the spirits of this city. Oh, God, let us stand not by our own will or our might, uh, but by your spirit. Uh, oh, Something 
special. I feel like there's a spirit of unity that God is going to send upon this church that you've never felt before in this solemn assembly. But it's going to take each and every one of you making your mind up that I'm going to make a sacrifice during this solemn assembly. And it's through the sacrifice that God is going to send the fire and the spirit of unity into this place. And when we all get in one mind and one accord, we all know what happens when that happens. Amen. That's what God wants to do. So I want you to lift your hands right now. And God's going to begin to deal with you about the sacrifice that he wants you to make. The sacrifice that you can bring to the altar and lay before the Lord. And when you lay that sacrifice down, God is going to begin to send the fire upon that sacrifice. Oh God, let the coals that are in the altar go to our lips, Lord Jesus. And begin to speak the sacrifice that you want us to make. Let it be done right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for this solemn assembly right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I pray that as individuals bring their sacrifice, whether it be a praise, whether it be monetarily, Lord Jesus, whether it be just some time, whatever it is, the sacrifice, God, that you're putting upon our hearts, that we bring to you, Jesus. God, I pray that you send the fire upon this house. And God, I pray that you bring a spirit of unity right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bind every spirit of the vision right now. I bind every spirit of hell that will try to come in and divide and conquer. Lord Jesus, I pray right now that there be an overcoming spirit come upon this place that we overcome any spirit and any weapon that would try to be coming against us. In the name of Jesus. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Praise God. If you can, clap your hands to the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Thank you all for allowing me to be here tonight. I love and appreciate y'all. I love and appreciate FAC, Pastor and Sister Nick, Sister Lindsay. You guys are awesome. And uh, just thrilled to be here with y'all. Go do what's right. And I'm preaching myself too. Amen. Praise God. There's a blessing in righteousness. God bless you all. Amen.